Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our meeting of Health, Education, Neighborhoods, Parks, Arts, and Rivers Committee. It's a little, it's a minute after one, and we're here in City Hall, room 1060. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Thank you, Councilmember O'Farrell, for being here. And Councilmember Price is actually downstairs at the budget hearing, so he can't be joining us today. And this meeting is called to order, and I'd like to remind those in the audience who would like to speak on any of the items. Uh, on anything on today's agenda or ge make a general public comment, please fill up, uh, sign up on the kiosk, kiosk booth right outside the door. Um, and at this point, I believe we have um, Ms. Antonio, Antonio Ramirez, who has signed up for public comment as well as every single item on, on the agenda. So if you, guys, if you could come on up, Antonio. We'll give you three minutes, two minutes for the items, and one minute for public comment. Okay. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> I'd like to go ahead and again discuss the parks. Um, the Music Center Grand Park, it is one of the most beautiful parks you have ever seen. And I know that all of you know where it is. It, next to Central Park in New York City, it is the most beautiful park. Really, it is. The problem is that you still have a lot of violence. You've got homeless um, bastards. The homeless, 99.9% .9 of the homeless people are violent. They are wicked. They are malicious. They are filthy. They are dirty. They are stink bombs. They're all of the above. I live on the streets homeless with these pigs, and I can't stand them. They're filthy. They don't have morals. They are self-centered. They're selfish. All they care is about themselves, but don't give a rat's ass about anybody else. They never say thank you when people pass Mr. by Ramirez, and give them things. Mr. Ramirez, the yes. county... The Grand Park is a county park. It's one well, it's it. also run by the city. It's not run by the city. It's run by well, the county. Um, but it, it does include parks, does it not? Does it? This, but the report is limited to city parks. If you want to focus on a city park. Well, okay. Well, all parks, we have a drug problem. We have drugs and homelessness. People can't go there and enjoy. Is that not correct? We're talking about city and county parks or state and federal. They're not safe. Children need to have a place to enjoy. I had a wonderful place to enjoy as a child. I was thrilled and I was blessed. I want the same for the other children of today. They need rec recreation. They need a place that is vibrant, tangible, exciting, safe, and secure. We don't have that. We are infested with these junkies, and gangbangers, niggers, and white trash. Knock it off. We need law enforcement to step up and say, get the hell out and leave these kids alone and stop the violence in all parks. And uh, you have, then you create a better neighborhoods and with more education and more law enforcement and <coughs> officers with balls who say and stand up to the plate and tell the criminals, knock it off or we will arrest you then we'll have a safer environment, a safer place to live. And then going on to other, um, boy, uh, number one, I tell you, Los Angeles is a zoo. You don't have to pay to come to Los Angeles. Um, it's a zoo, man. I wouldn't go to L.A. Zoo. I'd, I'd just go downtown L.A. That's a zoo. You don't have to pay. And for the L.A. Kids Steering Committee, wonderful ideas. Um, help them, coach them, but allow them to be children as well. Let them be free uh, with with, with their own innateness and independent uh, individuality. And number four, item number four, please, if you're going to build a Griffith Park golf complex and food and beverages, do not get homeboy industries. Fuck them. I worry every time that I go down there to uh, if they're going to spike my food. I worry about any and all gangbangers cooking my food. I've never, ever had them cook my food. Everything I purchase has been packaged or in a can. And... Um, and all I say um, with that is, again, we need to build better recreational parks. Um, we need somebody to watch over for the safety, security, freedom, and privacy, and the enjoyment and the quality of life for all people. Please, we need safe environment. Thank you. God bless America, and God bless Donald Trump. Thank you, Mr. Ramirez. Um, and since we have a very large crowd today, just in case um, someone's here for the first time, I just wanted to let you know this is uh, free speech, uh, First Amendment rights, and, um, and unfortunately there are some unintended consequences of that. So um, thank you very much for uh, sitting through that. And with that, there are no other public comment cards. i um, going to open up for general public comment if there was anyone who wanted to speak. Um, okay, so there's no public comment cards. Uh, so we are going to close public comment. And uh, Mr. O'Farrell, if you have no objections, I'd like to recommend that we take items four through eight on consent. No objections. Thank you. So that will be the order. So moving along to item number one. Daryl, do you want to read that in? Sure. City Administrative Officer and Zoo Department reports relative to the selection of a proposed concessionary at the Los Angeles Zoo. Chief Legislative Analyst and CEO to report jointly 
on the concession agreement between the city and the Greater Los Angeles Zoo Association. Thank you. Uh, would the CAO and representatives from the zoo and Glaza please come to the table? And as you guys are coming up, I just want to uh, first thank our CAO, CLA, and Glaza for their diligence and months, if not years, of work to get us to where we are here today. And we've seen extension after extension in this process. And while we're not yet quite at the finish line, this is a very critical step in getting there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first call up Glaza and then the CAO to discuss the concession, concession selection. So we'll have Don kick it off, and then we'll turn it over to the CAO to discuss the concessions agreement between the zoo and Glaza. So Don, do you mind uh, taking, uh, walking us through the process? Very fine. Uh, good afternoon, council members. I'm Don Peterson. I'm an interim president of Glaza. Um, Glaza is pleased to present a concessionaire for your approval pursuant to the RFP process that we have undertaken. Um, we had a rigorous selection process, followed all of the city guidelines. Our selection committee was composed of members from city personnel, Glaza personnel, and a Glaza trustee. And our results were nearly, uh, they were unanimous, and they were very highly in favor of SSA as the proposed concessionaire. Um, they bid on food and retail, food and beverage and retail. Um, and we present our, our report for your approval. We think they will make a wonderful partner at the zoo. And this will increase the commissions to the zoo by $600,000 per year without any concessions growth. So it's an excellent um, opportunity. Great. Um, CAO, do you want to add? The C <coughs> uh, Terry Sauer with the CAO's office. The CAO has reviewed the selection, um, participated in the development of the RFP, uh, or assisted Glaza with the development of the RFP. We have reviewed the uh, Glaza's report and the concession services agreement and concur with the recommendation for this to select SSA as the concessionaire. Great. Um, I have a couple of quick questions. Uh, and just to let the um, audience know, um, the concessions contract currently is operated by Glaza, and that's why Glaza did the whole um, RFP selection and then uh, worked, with the CA, worked with the city on a after the selection process. So thank you for that. Um, that's why we had Glaza present first. Um, so this is a question to either one of you guys. Um, how many potential bidders and subcontractors attended the bidders conference and how many submitted proposals? Um, there were 29, uh, 29 potential uh, bidders at the uh, bidders conference. There were proposals, proposers from three eligible bidders, Event Networks, uh, Sodexo, Centerplate, and SSA. And the way the RFP was structured, uh, bidders could bid on either retail only, food and beverage only, or a combination therein. And SSA and uh, Sodexo, Centerplate submitted bids for all three of those categories. And the third, so there was only two bidders? That uh, well, Event Network submitted a bid for retail only. Retail only, OK. Um, so how long was the application window open for? Uh, the bid, pr uh, the RFP was open uh, for, I believe, uh, approximately 60 days, which is typical. Additionally, the RFP, or the draft RFP, was public, so it was on the council file before it was actually released. So mm -hmm. had anyone wanted to look or see what the criteria were, because it is a public document for a public agency, it was available for review. So that's the standard length of time? Correct. Great. Uh, and then uh, could you walk us to the evaluation criteria and how each of the bidders scored? Um, the, um, I'll, defer to, I'll defer to Glaza. Sure. <clears throat> We um, had a very rigorous scoring system, and our uh, selection committee comprised of, of the people I mentioned before um, scored these entries individually, and then they discussed them as a whole. And their individual scores were, were almost unanimous across the board. Um, that we gave 10 points for the business plan from each proposer. Um, 30 points for the investment and the facility improvement because capital investment was a big part of this RFP. Um, 35 points for their proposed revenue sharing plan, which is what results in the revenues to the zoo. Um, 25 points for the proposer's history. We wanted a certain amount of experience in large, complex 
facilities like the zoo. It's very different than an arena or some place that has events at certain times with a certain number of ticket buyers. It's, it requires a lot more uh, planning and flexibility. And, and that, that constituted the entire score of 100 points. Um, SSA, on their food, beverage, and retail, scored 95.4 out of 100. Um, I would compare the same thing. Service Center, America Center Plate Sodexo on their food, beverage, and retail scored 66. Mm -hmm. um, then our retail only bidder, Event Network, scored 76.8, which was lower than SSA. Great. Um, can you tell us about how you intend to facilitate the transition between the concessions operator and the current concessions operator is? Um it, it's a joint venture between SSA and Centerplate. Okay. So the transition will involve the, the um, moving on of Centerplate and SSA assuming complete responsibility for the total operations. Okay. So, and I know there's a uh, capital improvements piece uh, in the contract, I mean in the proposal. So when will SSA begin the capital improvements on the concession stands and what is the proposed scope of work for the capital improvements? Um, SSA will begin immediately. Um, they proposed the highest uh, dollar value in improvements, $9 million. Um, Center Plate proposed $6 million. Um, they are going to start immediately. Their, their investment was weighted toward the beginning of the term, uh, which we really appreciate it because we need some um, new things to market for people to come to the zoo. Um, some of the things they're going to do is they're bringing in some popular local food items. They're going to subcontract with Pink's Hot Dogs and have the only stand outside of Pink's. Pink's are already there anyways, every single event. So. They, just bring, <laughs> the ball, they yeah. just bring their hot dogs every time, yeah, which exactly. is great. But now they can um, make their. They'll subcontract with Bean Sprouts, which is a very popular mm -hmm. provider of healthy food options for children, healthy and attractive, that make the kids. Bean Sprouts, I think it's, they have vegan options? They do. Okay, so Councilman Corrette will love that. Yes, we comply with the good food <laughs> purchasing policy. Um, and they're going to have a chef work on a menu at Reggie's, the current Reggie's from Prue and Proper, which is a very popular Los Angeles restaurant. Mm -hmm. Great. So when you say um, in the beginning, so do you know approximately when the whole $9 million will be um, uh, I invested? Well, the term mm -hmm. is 10 years, and excuse me while I... I believe six of the nine million will be invested in the first, the first five-year portion of the term, and the remainder will be invested over the next. It's good. It's good. If you could give us a break, I mean, I know it's in the proposal somewhere, so we'll we'll take a look at that. But that's good to hear that it's majorities in the beginning. Uh, Mr. O'Farrell, do you have any questions? I do. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair, and thank you for report. Uh, actually, I'm going to. I want to hear from CAOCLA. Uh, as well, there's another part of the report. I understand. There, <coughs> yeah. Yes, sir. There's a. There were two pieces to this report. Uh, the first is the selection of the concessionaire. Yeah. The second piece is the is a report on the file <coughs> concerning the agreement between the city and Glaza for the extension of for management of the concessions. Right. And we're going to hear that too. Y yes, yeah. sir. Uh, after after this piece. after this piece. So I think the only question I have at this juncture. In, uh, let's. Can you describe the terms of the concessionaire contract? So it initially goes until 2022, right? And then, so you're, uh, if, if, it, if SSA is going to invest $9 million, clearly it's a longer term investment. Yeah. There are a couple different moving pieces here, sir. The, the, con the contract with the concessionaire is a 10-year agreement with a five-year option. The current operating agreement with Glaza between the city and Glaza is what expires in 2022, and the okay. city will be entering into discussions to Thanks for uh, extend that, that agreement. Me. So uh, I'll, I'll wait until the second yeah. part to ask more questions. Thank you. Yeah. Well, if there's only the questions, we're going to go exactly into the second piece. <laughs> so to kick off the discussion on the concessions agreement between the zoo and Glaza, which is the second piece that you want, you have questions about, I understand the CAO has recommendations that need to be read into the record. 
Correct. Um, Mr. Chairman, we completed our report yesterday and it was uploaded to the council file, so we will need to read our recommendations into the record. Um, this is a joint report from the CAO and the CLA, and the recommendations are, uh, the first recommendation is that the council, subject to the approval of the mayor, approve the attached Sixth Amendment to the agreement between the City of Los Angeles and the Greater Los Angeles Zoo Association for management of concessions at the Los Angeles Zoo through September 29th, 2022, and authorize the zoo director to execute the amendment subject to the approval of the city attorney as to form. And that's an attachment to this report. The next recommendations that follow are that the council, in accordance with Section 7 of amendment, of the amendment, instruct Glaza with assistance of the city administrative officer, chief legislative analyst, zoo department, and controller to establish a cost allocation methodology that Glaza would utilize to clearly identify the direct and indirect costs of administering the concessions contract, and that and that considers best accounting practices for nonprofits to monitor these types of costs within 30 days of execution of the amendment. B complete the cost allocation study and submit it to the city for review and approval no later than October 1st, 2019, and C, report on the status of the cost allocation study to Health Education Neighborhoods, Neighborhoods Parks, Arts, and River Committee monthly or as requested by the committee chair. Recommendation number two, instruct the CAO, CLA, with assistance from the zoo director and the city attorney to negotiate a new agreement between the city of Los Angeles and Glaza since the existing operating agreement will expire on September 29th, 2022, and transmit a proposed agreement to the council for approval within 120 days. Recommendation three, instruct the CAO, CLA, with assistance of the city attorney to incorporate the provisions of the amendment in the proposed agreement as appropriate and any additional concession-related requirements which may be necessary. Recommendation four, instruct the offices of the CAO and the CLA with assistance from the zoo director and the city attorney to incorporate the terms of all relevant memoranda of understanding, including but not limited to the marketing MOU between the zoo and Glaza into an, a new agreement. Five, authorize the CAO, CLA with assistance of the city attorney and the zoo director to make any technical uh, adjustments to this amendment as necessary. Great, thank you. A um, couple of questions, and I'll and I know you have some questions too, Mr. O'Farrell. But um, so, how will the concessions revenue sharing between Glaza and the zoo change if this amendment is approved? If this amendment is implemented, um, the proposed amendment shifts from establishing commission, uh, establishing the percentages based on the gross commissionable revenue, to dividing the commissions that will actually be collected by Glaza on the uh, on behalf of uh, the zoo. Um, what that means is that the, instead of the zoo receiving 10% of gross commissionable revenue, which at the moment is about $1.1 $1 .1 million, the zoo would receive 80% of the commissions collected by Glaza. What that means is there's a minimum annual guarantee of commissions of $2.5 million, and so at a minimum the zoo would receive $2 million a year. Additionally, we would shift away from a percentage-based uh, fee uh, for concessions administration. Currently, Glaza receives a 3% fee. The uh, proposed amendment would move to a flat rate of 275000 for the first year. That also um, requires Glaza to uh, develop a uh, more robust cost accounting um, cost allocation plan so that we can track costs. The, this was in part as a result of the recommendation of the recent controller's audit. And what we mean by that is to work with our offices and the controller to develop a cost accounting plan. And we're not suggesting that Glaza has to go out and put significant capital investment into a new accounting system. But what we are suggesting is looking at things like ex using Excel or Google Docs or Access or a database to allow us to track the costs. And we would uh, work with Glaza and the controller's office to achieve that. Mm -hmm. And I know I've spoken with Glaza. They're working on uh, a whole comprehensive cost accounting for all of their uh, programs. And, and I am open to, um, uh, once they're completed with that, to looking at that again to see what we could do. But um, 
How was the flat fee of $275,000 determined, and why are the departments recommending to transition from percentage to flat fee? Um, that's an outgrowth of the 2018 controller's audit. Um, one of the things that the controller um, noticed is that it was very difficult to attribute costs uh, for the uh, admission, administration of concessions. Um, what they suggested is either a fixed fee for concessions administration. What we did is request Glaza to provide us their estimate of what they thought the costs were for concessions administration. And that was, um, and their estimate was a about $277, about $185,000 in direct costs for a full-time equivalent, and $92,000 um, for indirect costs. We then went and talked to the controller's auditor, and we looked at the costs that they had, Glaza had provided to the controller's auditor, and those costs were relatively in line with what Glaza had provided to us, and so based on that, we uh, recommended the $275,000 fixed fee. Great. Um, and, and, you know, one last question about cost accounting since we brought that up. Can you walk us through what cost accounting, what, what the cost accounting information being requested by the CAO should look like and what is being expected? I know you said um, you don't expect a whole change in the system. What the controller said is that, there, that it was difficult to define what, they, what Glaza considers direct costs, how that relates to what the city considers direct costs. Um, when we met with Glaza, one of the things that we looked at was the city's cost allocation plan. And while we're not suggesting that we do something as complex as the cost allocation plan, we identified a number of areas that we thought if Glaza can look at these areas and then apply them to their cost allocation plan, those would have been for example, uh, employee benefits, so the fringe benefits, and then there's what's called a departmental overhead rate, and that in, that's their general administrative accounting, and those types of costs. I mean, there's a bunch of other things in the mm -hmm. cap, and unless you want me to put you to sleep, I'll, I'll, I'll pass on that. Um, what we would suggest is sitting down with the controller's mm -hmm. auditor. We've already met with her. She's very receptive to working with Glaza, but again, what we're really looking for is how much, how many positions, how much time they spend, you know, what other costs are in direct support of that. And so we're working with Glaza to figure out the best way to capture those costs and be able to report those to the city. Yeah, and, and I'm aware that, you know, the city and, and nonprofit and private sector all do it a little bit differently. Right. But more importantly, I think we're in a very opportune time, especially with the new zoo director, general manager coming in, and also a new um, Glaza president coming in. And I'm glad that to see a lot more communication happening between Glaza and the zoo and, and the city so we could work through all these issues so that going forward um, we could have more um, collaborations and, 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 and um, uh, uh, what is that word? Not synthesis, but uh, <laughs> synergies. Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, so we won't have these problems. But um, Councilman Farrell? It's interesting, Mr. Chair, because I, I'm thinking, as I'm hearing these reports, is, is perspective, right? So when I was sitting there in 2013, the operating agreement, when it goes until 2022, so I have to keep reviewing the files tucked away in my brain about how long, uh, how long away 2022 seemed in 2013, but now it's just around the corner. That is it, correct. So it's very, very interesting to me. And, and I don't even remember when this operating agreement went into place. It was the 90s. Correct. The, actually, the, the current operating agreement was uh, entered into between the city and Glaza in 1997. The concessions agreement that we are replacing was executed in 1981. So, and because it its term expired in 2016, right. there's more urgency. We've been extending it piecemeal, and so there was more urgency to get a new concession agreement in place, and our intent is that what's in that concessions agreement would then be incorporated into that larger operating agreement, right. but that was, we've been limping along with that at six months at a time. And, and so, I, I mean, I think that this is the first RFP since 1997. Correct. For concessionaires. And then this operating agreement. So, so in other words, when I was sitting in your place, my aim was to untangle this big mystery that was the LA Zoo and, and the relationships and the responsibilities. And so we're getting there. We're about to get there, which is exciting. Um, and 
I know that, that we worked very diligently on making sure that there was greater collaboration between Glaza and the CAO's office, CLA, um, uh, in terms of, you know, moving the, the zoo forward and getting these agreements that, that people could make sense of. So that's good. Um, so we appreciate all that. And, and um, yeah, we've been working on, on the new concessionaires back in for three years now, a little over three years. So, so just some, some context there. Um, one thing that has always been very important, and we talked about this, the whole uh, healthy food, good food purchasing policy, which we worked on uh, in adopting it for the city and, and across the city and rec and parks as well. The revenue share, we've always focused on that. Um, so one question is, this concessionaire administrative position, is it one person? As Glaza reported to us, it's a it's a full time it, it's a full time equivalent. Full time equivalent. So it's aggregate. It's one person. Okay, in aggregate, it's one person, and um, that could change in future years if there's really a six hundred thousand dollar increase in revenue. Correct. We anticipate that it may change not only for that reason, but mm -hmm. the draft uh, concession services agreement that was an exhibit to our RFP that will be entered into between Glaza and the selected concessionaire mm -hmm. requires much more um, active and frequent oversight of the concessionaire. Right. And so we anticipate that our costs may rise due to that because right. we need to and, have people doing And that. so this uh, fixed amount is a great place to start. Right. That could change depend, depending on sales and, and the increase in volume and you know, the work that it would be associated And that's with that. one of the reasons that the cost allocation plan right. is so important, is to be able to capture that. And then, and there's also the opportunity for Glaza to, if they're, when they present their cost allocation plan to mm -hmm. request, if there is a need for additional resources, to request those, yeah. you know, through the zoo director, through the budget process, and, and sort of allow for additional things that sort of are an outgrowth of their discussions with the zoo and the zoo director. But so allow the allowing the city to weigh in. And we're establishing a system to accommodate that, which we really haven't had before. Right, correct. So, so that's terrific. Now, Pinks alone tells us that, that you're going to see a huge increase in, in sales. We and that's, hope so. Right? Um, so when I moved to Los Angeles in 82, I lived near there, near Pinks. They, they were $2.31 a hot dog. <laughs> Believe me, I know because I was dirt poor and I ate hot dogs all the time. But... Um, so what makes us think that we're going to see a $600,000 increase in sales? That's not in sales. It's in commission to the zoo. In commission to the zoo. Thank to you. Zoo. Yeah. So it's revenue, yeah. not, not sales. And that's based on current sales amounts. Right. So as we increase sales, we anticipate increased commission to the zoo. All right. Projections for that. Okay. Um, well, that really answers, that answers my, my questions. Yeah. Thank you. Great, Great work. Yeah, thanks. Great. Um, you know, Council Member Farrow, it's, it's funny. You came to L.A. in 82. I, I immigrated to this country in 81. So <laughs> where, where the last time this I happened? I thought perhaps you were born in 1982. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're going to say. <laughs> close. Not, not that close. But... Um, yeah, so um, this is great that we're doing this. We're almost about to land the plane on yeah. this one, and we're very excited that um, uh, that we are going to be updating all of these um, agreements and contracts. But more importantly, mm -hmm. looking forward to the next chapter where with you know a lot more collaboration that we're already seeing. So very excited about that. Um, is there anything else you guys want to add before I read the rec my amendments and recommendations in? No, sir. No. Great. Um, so I want to amend recommendation 1B to read, and this addresses what you're concerned about, Councilman O'Farrell, mm -hmm. complete the cost allocation study and submit it to the city for review and approval no later than October 1st, 2019, mm -hmm. and present recommendations for adjusting the concessions management fee as appropriate, and two, amend, um, actually, I think this is the one, uh, amend the recommendation two to read, instruct the CAO CLA with assistance from the zoo director and city attorney to negotiate a new new agreement between the City of Los Angeles and Glaza since the two existing operating agreements will expire on September 29, 2022, and transmit a proposed agreement to the Council for approval in 180 days. Um, three, uh, I would also like to note on page six, bullet point eight of the CAO's report related to the ability of the city to reappoint members to the Glaza board. I'd like to get to read ability of the city to appoint a voting member 
and CD Council District 4 to appoint a non-voting member to the Glaza Board. Mr. O'Farrell, any objections? No objections. Thank you. So ordered. So that closes that. Thank you very much. Um, and I think, are you, oh yeah, you, you guys aren't here for the next items. Thank you so very much. I look yeah. forward to um, continue working on all of this. So items, uh, Mr. O'Farrell, if you don't mind, I'd like to take items two and three together. Oh, uh, that is absolutely fine. Great. Uh, Mr. CLA, Daryl, you want to read in uh, both items two and three? Item number two. LA Kids Steering Committee Report Ordinance and Resolution Relative to the 2019 through 20 Proposition K Assessment. Item number three, LA for Kids Steering Committee Report Relative to Supplemental Proposition K Maintenance Awards with Unanticipated Revenue for the Department of Recreation and Parks. Hi, Jennifer Shimatsu representing the CAO. Great. Um, Walk us through it. Thank you. Uh, so the Proposition K program is currently in its uh, 22nd year of a 30-year authorization. The report before you is the annual Proposition K assessment report that outlines the proposed changes for the program's current year and the upcoming eight-year cycle that incorporates the RVNOC funding recommendations and BOE's reprogramming recommendations. On April 25th, the LA for Kids Steering Committee approved the recommendations of this report. Of the 183 specified projects, 136 are complete, 17 are active, 20 phase projects are in various stages of completion, and 10 projects are remaining that have not yet been implemented. There will, <coughs> there will be a 10th and final competitive funding cycle. The earliest that funding can be available for this would be July 2021. There are only two competitive award categories remaining, youth schools and recreation projects, and acquisition of parks and natural lands. Uh, our office expects to report back to this committee in July to provide the status of the program and the funding status for active and future projects. This will also include the final proposed timeline for initiating the 10th and final competitive cycle. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have regarding this report. Great. Thank you so very much. Um, you answered several of my questions, but you mentioned the new funding, I mean, the two categories that are left. Yes. Can you briefly give a description on each one of those categories, what they are? So, um, well, youth schools and recreation projects. Um, so for that one, there's $10.6 million available. And um, our basic understanding for that is that LAUSD and recreation and parks would work with the mayor and uh, council offices to identify projects. Uh, the grant applicant needs to be a public charter or state licensed private school that would need to execute a joint use agreement with Rec and Parks. And the project would also need to be on school property with a recreational component to it and public serving during uh, non-school hours. And the acquisition one is um, purchasing of land. Okay. Um, can you help, can you walk us through the process of identifying and funding projects as part of the joint use agreements with LAUSD? So, um, like I said before, Rec and Parks usually um, works with LAUSD and the mayor's office to identify this. Unfortunately, Rec and Parks couldn't be here today. They're on a, at an off-site meeting, um, but they have more information on that. Hmm. Okay. Um, and um, one more general question. How many total Prop K specific projects are completed? And, um, how, and how many are in design or construction? Um, and does BOE anticipate being able to complete the spec specified projects prior to the expiration of the Prop K programs? So 136 are complete right now. Um, 17 are either in design or construction. And there are also 20 phase projects that are in various stages of completion. Um, at this point, it is both BOE's and CAO's um, intention to complete all specified projects mm -hmm. um, unless the project is deemed infeasible. Um, City Attorney has advised that for any projects or portions of projects that are not implemented due to legal feasibility issues, the amount at issue would need to be withheld from the Proposition K annual assessments as a permanent loss of program mm -hmm. funds. So we're doing everything we can to make sure all of these specified projects are complete. Great. And the last competitive cycle will, will, will begin in July 2021, right? Um, that's when the earliest uh, funding okay. would be available. It takes a year for um, BOE and Rec and Parks um, to okay. go through the process and identify um, matching funds and all of that. So you'll be keeping this board app apprised? Yes. Right. Great. Um, great. Uh, Mr. O'Farrell, you have any questions? Just uh, a one-off of sorts. So the Hollywood Rec Center, mm -hmm. uh, I understand it's a, about $600,000 that will be allocated 
from Prop K, mm -hmm. and you meet with Rec and Parks regularly. You know, there's a larger uh, pot of funding which will be allocated for that rec center to completely demolish and rebuild the facility. And so um, I, ju I would just want to make sure that we're aligned in the approach so there's no duplication or um, lack of information when we start designing to rebuild that facility and can still utilize this Prop K funding for So we, the um, we've met with Rec and Parks um, to go over all of the Proposition K projects. Mm -hmm. uh, we intend to meet with them again to go over, um, to finalize pretty much mm -hmm. the list and to see if any of the projects do qualify for Measure A or Proposition 68 funding to help yeah. with the shortfalls. Terrific. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and before I read in my instructions, uh, Mr. CLA or City Attorney, you know, for the previous item, there was no, there was uh, all the public comment was satisfied, but I didn't, did I need to open that up or again or for item number one? No, you had, you had called for okay. comments and there were no cards, so. Great. And for item number two, there are no cards either, so. Great, just want to make sure of that. So my instructions for uh, item number two will be to receive and file for LA for a kids steering committee report dated April 26, 2019 and approve the LA for Kids Steering Committee report dated April 30, 2019, and approve the ordinance res uh, and resolution of intended to levy and collect annual assessments for fiscal year 2019-20. And for item number three, I want to approve the LA for Kids Steering Committee recommendations. And Mr. Clerk, I understand for item number two needs to get to council before May 15th. So can we make sure that yes, sir. it happens? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. and um, Mr. O'Farrell, if you have no questions or objections, I'd like to um, move those items. Let's do it. Seeing no objections, those items are approved. Yeah. And thank you. And uh, Mr. Clerk, do we have anything else? This is clear, sir. Thank you. With that, our meeting is adjourned.